an evening bath, a delight for the two here. In their grandparents' and great-grandparents' time, this was only possible once a week at the most. A zinc tub filled with water in the kitchen had to suffice for the whole family. Today, Germans spend about 36%, that is over one-third of their drinking water needs, on their evening baths or shower fun. This is even possible without any bad conscience with regard to the environment or the family budget, as experienced here in Berlin Spandau. In this four-member household, everyone's allowed to shower as long as they wish, although wastewater is collected in a cesspool and later transported at high cost. It is clear to us that we have to keep the generated wastewater volumes as low as possible. I can see it with our neighbors, who have to empty their cesspools twice as much as we do. Water from the shower or bathtub flows over a separate second pipe network into the biological mechanical treatment system installed in the utility room. The grey water is treated in several stages. A special filter retains coarse material such as hair and lint. Bacteria which grow on the carrier material enhance the aerobic decomposition of the grey water components. A UV emitter gets rid of the rest of the germs and clear water is made available for use. I am always pleased to hear when water is being pumped from one compartment to the other. This is ready cash. I'll see what it looks like. If what isn't quality, wonderful. The water is not suitable for drinking purposes, but for toilet flushing it's adequate by all means. This is also what the 30 inhabitants of the newly restored former fish smokehouse in the middle of Hamburg think. We built a grey water recycling plant 20 years ago. It has been more like a do-it-yourself thing and from today's perspective the maintenance expenditure was high. Five years ago we installed this plant from the firm Pontus. This system requires little maintenance but it is good to have a look at it now and then. We save 900 euro on drinking water costs and this is a real success. Researchers at different German universities have shown that recycled grey water is like rainwater, hygienically sound and as such can be used for laundry. Due to the modular design, the single modules of the so-called aquacycle can be varied depending on the amounts of generated grey water. Larger systems are more profitable. Take for example the one seen in this cellar. With this system, 1,500 to 2,000 litres of shower water from 19 houses are treated daily. 800 recycling cabinets have been delivered to date by Pontos. Two-thirds of them were delivered within Germany, and the remaining went to Western Europe, North Africa, Australia, and even to the Cape Verde Islands and the Maldives. Hamburg's Municipal Refuse Disposal Service has one of the largest grey water recycling plants in Germany. It treats the water from 32 showers and hand wash basins and stretches over two storeys high. The principle of this large plant is similar to the smaller one for a one-family house. We have a total capacity of 21,000 litres. The tanks for grey water treatment are found in the upper area. At the beginning, coarse filtration takes place. When grey water passes through the different stages, it is collected here. About 6,000 litres of service water can be stored. The noise you hear in between comes from the pumps which transport water either to the road sweepers found outside or to the toilet flushing tanks. The road sweepers function properly without any problems. The nozzles do not clog, as is often the case with rainwater in which sand is trapped, or with well water which contains iron or manganese. Treated grey water from the showers is also used to dilute the de-icing salt solution for the winter road clearing services. The profit is just enormous. After all, about two million liters of non-potable water are produced by this plant. 
In this blockhouse in Berlin, the newest grey water recycling plant has just been completed in summer 2007 for the whole residential complex. The existing water concepts from the 19th and 20th century are not able to solve the upcoming problems of the 21st century. The goal should be to produce as little wastewater as possible. This is achieved here with grey water recycling. Besides grey water from bath tubes, showers and washing machines, the more polluted grey water from kitchens is also treated for reuse and toilet flushing by 250 residents. A very promising research project initiated by scientists and industry, whereby bacteria which settle on these foam cubes can proliferate vigorously. A backup system which may supply drinking water or rainwater through a separate network can be used to cover the demand when needed. I am going to add some food dye to our service water tank in order to test the pipe network systems and exclude any cross connections. So let's see if all has been properly installed. I flush and here the right water comes out. This is our service water. Now we move to the wash basin. Here no blue water should come out, neither on the warm nor on the cold tap side. They've been seen in Hamburg for a long time, waterless urinals. Over 4,000 of them have been installed in public buildings in the last 10 years. Their principle goes back to a Vienna patent from 1885. The Senate Department of Environment helped foster acceptance of the system by promoting a new membrane technology. This is a small tube which opens under the pressure of urine and closes when no water or liquid arises. Through urine separation, Hamburg not only saves 22,000 cubic meters of drinking water a year, urine makes up only 1% of the total wastewater. However, it contains high-grade nutrients which cannot be collected in spite of modern wastewater treatment plants. Phosphates and nitrogen can still pollute the water bodies. We want to try to strike out in a new direction in sanitary engineering by extracting these contaminants beforehand. At the Institute of Wastewater Management and Water Pollution Control at the Technical University of Hamburg, scientists are on the right track to win high-grade fertilizers using different technologies. Today, there are several developments in many parts of the world on urine-separating toilets, where urine is collected and utilized immediately, as in the case in China with already one million installations. Basically, we want to build up an industry which produces a dry fertilizer from urine that will have high-quality standards. In more housing developments in Germany, such as in hamburg Allemoor or here in Schoenich and near Berlin, residents already produce their own fertilizer for the garden by means of compost toilets. In addition to human excrement, kitchen and garden waste rustle one to two levels down the compost container where they undergo microbial decomposition. An exhaust pipe directly connected to the roof and boosted with a ventilator provides the required oxygen and ensures an odor-free operation. After two to three years, the finished compost can be removed, a rich brown soil which smells like forest earth. Most of the families were very enthusiastic about this ancient toilet principle for their modern houses. When we bought the house, we were not aware of the presence of a compost toilet. At the beginning I was a bit skeptical as to whether I get used to it. Today, I must say, I find it wonderful and the benefits prevail.
Many families have been extremely creative and have decorated their draining pipes beautifully. Wastewaters from showers, washing machines and dishwashers are treated in a constructed wetland. Wastewater is discharged through a pipe system in two stages. The first in the reed bed, which is seen here behind us. And after its passage through the gravel filter, the treated water is infiltrated in an infiltration ditch. In spite of the high costs for the planted soil filter, including infiltration, such a decentralized disposal pays off after five to six years, since no wastewater is generated and less drinking water is consumed. Thus, it's an investment in the future. Such an investment was also profitable for the Lurs in Hamburg-Bergedorf. They constructed their house ten years ago from a run-down greenhouse with a compost toilet and a constructed wetland and no connection to the municipal sewer. The shabby greenhouse was converted into a blooming oasis. A successful experiment which is worth emulating in other areas in which greenhouses would otherwise cease to exist sooner or later. International trade fairs show it over and over again. The new decentralized technologies are fully developed. They offer large benefits even for countries with a still deficient water infrastructure due to their greater flexibility and lower costs compared to centralized systems. With its Zero M project, the European Union promotes the implementation of these sustainable water concepts in the Mediterranean countries. With them, the worldwide upcoming water problems can be mitigated and the remaining resources conserved. <laughs>